And for the final part in the meiosis series, we're going to look at how meiosis causes variation. There are three main ways that meiosis causes variation. The first is through independent or random assortment. When the homologous pairs align on the spindle fiber in prophase one, it is completely random which way around the pairs align. So here you have the pairs aligning with all of the dark blues on one side, so they will all go into one of the cells and consequently the gametes. Whereas here, you've got a mixture of the dark blues and the light blues. There is nothing to dictate which way this works. Now, when you're making gametes, half of your chromosomes come from your mother and half of them come from your father. So in each chromosome pair, you have a maternal chromosome and a paternal chromosome. You could make gametes that were made solely of maternal or paternal chromosomes, but much more likely is you will have a mixture. In humans, because we have 23 chromosomes, that means there are 2 to the power of 23 or 8.4 million different possible gametes that we could make um, looking at all of the different ways that we could align our chromosomes um, due to independent assortment. And that consequently is a hugely important mechanism for increasing variation. And the way that it increases variation is it makes new combinations of alleles. And that is the kind of the key term here, trying to make new combinations of alleles. The second mechanism for producing variation during meiosis is through crossing over. Now, during prophase one, the homologous pairs of chromosomes can form bivalents which allow synapsis at chiasmata. Now, isn't that a wonderful sentence that doesn't really mean anything, except it obviously means quite a lot. Um, and we're going to look now at what it means and how we can use that to explain how crossing over helps to increase variation. So let's have a look at this diagram. And in this diagram, you can see that the homologous pairs have to all intents and purposes held hands. And when they hold hands like that, we call it a bivalent. The point at which they are holding hands is called a chiasma. The plural is chiasmata. So this bivalent has formed one chiasma. At the chiasma, you can have synapsis. And what happens in synapsis is that the DNA strand literally breaks off and reattaches. And so the result is here where you have um, a chromosome that has a little bit of a different chromosome attached to it. And then that chromosome is attached to the other one. Now, of course, what this does is it once again increases the variation in the combination of alleles because what we now have is we have a maternal chromosome with a few paternal alleles and a paternal chromosome with a few maternal alleles and so this is yet another way that we are able to use meiosis to increase variation. The third and final way of using meiosis to increase variation perhaps doesn't feel like meiosis itself, because it is what would happen to the products of meiosis, but it's what we call random fertilization. Now, um, we exist in with polyspermatic males, i.e. they produce um, many sperm in one ejaculation, and so there is nothing to determine which sperm reaches the egg first. It will be the fittest sperm but there's, there's no um, kind of genetic predetermination of that. Likewise, there is nothing to say which egg matures that month. So it is completely random which gametes end up fertilizing which each other, which means it is then completely random what combination of alleles the offspring will have, which leads to greater genetic variation, which leads to greater biological fitness, which is what populations need. Hopefully these three videos on meiosis 
have helped you to really understand the process and applications of mitosis.